Welcome to Bloom at the Yoga Garden and thank you so much for joining me for this short class today. So this will be your quick fix yoga. So we'll spend about half an hour, 35 minutes, just getting everything going and getting ourselves ready for whatever we've planned or whatever we're intending to do later and just help to keep the body moving. So we'll begin by lying back and down on our mats. So get yourself comfortable. Feel as if you're stretching the back neck up along your mat so that you're, you don't want your chin sticking up in the air. You want it just to be in a nice plane with your forehead. Imagine you're rolling your shoulders away from your ears so that it's almost as if the shoulder blades begin to touch each other and you're resting on the flat part of your shoulder blades. And that'll allow your arms to rotate so the backs of the hands can be in the floor, palms facing up, ready to receive. Whatever blessings, whatever is going to come your way. The heel of the right foot's at the right edge of the mat, the heel of the left foot's at the left edge of the mat. And literally, just take a couple of rounds of your breath to allow yourself to arrive on your mat. You've set aside this time in your busy day to look after yourself, to nourish your mind, body and spirit. And it's so important that we take this time for ourselves, this time for a bit of relaxation, a bit of pleasure, dare I say it, a bit of fun. So just continue to follow your breath for another couple of rounds. And then I'm just going to read this little Thich Nhat hand meditation. It's one of my favorites. And if you would like to, you can synchronize your breath with the words. And if you're going to do that, just take a normal breath now. And then on your next inhale, I breathe in this moment, exhaling. I breathe out everything that is not of the moment. Inhaling, I am here in my body, in the present. Exhaling, I let go of anything that is not of this moment. Inhaling, I breathe in spaciousness. Exhaling, I breathe out solidity, rigidity. Inhaling, I breathe in possibility. Exhaling, I breathe out expectation. Inhaling, I breathe in the beginner's mind, the unknown. Exhaling, I breathe out limitations, what I think I know. And just return to your normal breath and maybe you will notice it has begun to slow down. Without you having to make any real effort at all, this breath that is with you 24-7 is suddenly slower, calmer. And maybe you feel now that you have really arrived on your mat. So it's really important that we spend these few minutes centering ourselves because we can't just expect ourselves to dive into our yoga practice straight from whatever hustle and bustle we were doing previously. So as always, be kind to yourself. Don't do anything that you know isn't suitable for you. So if you have any aches or pains, any old injuries, always respect them. 
If you know something I suggest isn't going to suit you, please leave it out. You do not have to do it. Use a prop or modify it maybe in some way if that's going to help. But sometimes it's just as beneficial to have a rest. So we're going to cross the right foot over the left and take our arms up overhead. And then we're going to take hold of the right wrist with the left hand and feel as if you're stretching the right arm up overhead, over behind your head onto the floor. The shoulders are rolling down. So the tendency is for the shoulders to roll up. Try and keep your shoulders rolling down. Press into the heels of both feet. Big inhale and exhale. Just hinge over to the right. So we're going to be doing a bit about core strength today. I didn't mention that earlier. And back to center and just generally strength in general. And now on, change the cross of your ankles and take hold of the left hand, right, left wrist with the right hand. Big inhale, exhale, hinge over to the right. So this is an area and gently back to center where women very often do not have a huge amount of core strength or upper body strength. So we're going to be looking at that as well. So we're going to bring our knees in towards our chest. We may be a wee rock from side to side. And then we're just going to squeeze them in as much as we can. So watch when you squeeze in that your shoulders don't help. So try and roll your shoulders down. Squeeze in nice and tightly. And then let go and see if your, do your legs spring away. If they do, your arms are doing all the work. So squeeze, try again, squeeze them in and then let go and see if you can get them to stay there. And then maybe squeeze in a little bit more. And you'll really begin to feel your core having to work. So suck your navel back towards your spine and see if you can get another wee millimeter. Brilliant. And then from here, gently release. And we're going to take the lower legs up to more or less parallel. And then from here, just to this angle. So hopefully your lower back is nicely nestled onto the floor. So check that it is. And see if you can really encourage all of your back to be supported by your mat. And from here, I say any back issues, hold on to the edges of your mat or put your hands in underneath your bottom. Otherwise, we're just going to open our legs out of that angle, out to the sides. And again, you'll probably notice that, that your lower back has come off the mat, so you squeeze it down in again. Watch your shoulders. And then from here, we're going to just do a few scissors. So as I say, hold on to the edges of your mat if you need to. So right over left, left over right, right over left, left over right, right over left, left over right, right over left, left over right. Last one. Well, nearly. We're going to change direction or change the left over, over right this time, right over left. So different one leading. So same number on this side. I think this is number three in this side. Four. Five. And then bring your knees into your chest. We rug and say, welcome core. Maybe you've got a wee bit of heat. And we're on the way. So from here, we're going to straighten one leg, left leg along the floor, bring your right knee in towards your chest and just literally take your right knee across towards the left. So use your left hand to encourage to cross the whole of the right hip's going to come off the floor, but we are going to try and keep the right shoulder on the floor. So stretch your right arm out to the side. Any sciatica problems or anything, maybe feel this immediately. So just go gently. And back to centre, swap sides. Left knee in, same thing again, left arm stretched out and take it over. And if you can, turn your head and look the opposite direction. So 
I can hear my tummy rumbling. It obviously appreciates that little twist. So now we're going to plant the left foot in the floor, cross the right knee over. And if you can, you can tuck the toes in behind, but you don't need to do that bit. But if you have the flexibility, you can do so. So you can either have the left foot in the floor or lift it up. And then again, both knees over towards the left. So we're not staying here too long. Maybe give your left, right hip, sorry, a wee rub. And back to centre. Swap sides. So again, either right foot in the floor or keep them lifted. If you want to work a bit harder, knees down to the right hand, head left. And again, maybe give this right hip a wee rub. One more breath. Back to centre. Undo the cross of your legs. And then we'll just rock and roll up to sit. And meet me in Dandasana. So Dandasana is the kind of, also called staff pose. So you're sitting right on your sit bones, shift the flesh, bring your hands down either side of your body, toes coming towards your face. So it's a strong posture and you'll feel strong. So you can keep your hands down either side of your body. In fact, we're going to do that now anyway. So everybody bring your hands down either side of your body. So just a little, just a little taste of what's to come. And all we're going to do is shift our bottom back. So we're going to see if we can shift ourselves up to the end of our mat, just using our hands and our arms. So take a big inhale and lift your bottom and shift yourself back. Inhale, lift your bottom and shift yourself back. Inhale, press into your hands, lift your bottom. By now you should nearly be off the end of your mat. One more. I better come back before I disappear out of shot. So if that was too much, if that really was out of the question for you, what you can do, you can have we practice at this. You can use a couple of bricks, anything at all, to just lift the floor up a wee bit. And it makes it so much easier. And you just press into the bricks instead of into the floor. Okay. So now we're going to swing our legs to one side and bring yourself up into tabletop. So our knees are below our hips, our wrists are below our shoulders. And make sure your knees aren't too wide apart. You want your knees at the most hip width apart, maybe even slightly less than hip width apart for what we're going to do now. So check that your wrists more or less below your shoulders. So another little bit about upper body strength. So you really need to make sure that your core is engaged. And we'll just do a couple of wee moving cat cows before we go into it. So take a big inhale, belly to the floor, bottom up towards the ceiling, press the floor away. And exhale, tuck your tail and bring your bottom back down into your cat pose. Draw your body through, press into your elbows, try and keep them in into your cow. Exhale, tuck your tail, chin to chest, round your shoulders, down into child's pose. Draw yourself through and come back to your neutral tabletop. So from here, we're going to see if we can come down at an angle of about 45 degrees. So we're going to be pressing strongly into the base of the index finger thumb. All the fingers are well spread. Elbows are going to go back. So we're going to, we don't want our elbows going out. We want them to come back. So we're going to take a big inhale. So again, check that your navel is back towards your spine or your, that'll really help with, in this pose. Big inhale, elbows going back, nose down to the floor, pause. Inhale back up again. How do you get on? And this is strong. Big inhale here. Exhale. Elbows in, lower down, pause. Bring yourself up again. One more. Inhale. Exhale, lower down. Pause. And bring yourself back up again. So we're just going to add a wee bit to it this time. 
Big inhale. Exhale. Lower down. And this time we're going to lift the right leg up. Press into both hands and bring yourself up. So we're only going to do one of those on each side. Big inhale. Exhale. Pause. Left leg up. Bring yourself up. Try and come up evenly in both sides. And by now it'll be getting really difficult and it is a strong thing to do, but it is really good for your upper body strength. So from here, we're just going to stretch our legs out behind us and bring yourself into Sphinx pose, just briefly. It probably feels quite nice after that. So elbows below your shoulders, both hands parallel to each other, hands and arms, and parallel to the mat. So lift your front ribs towards the back ribs. And again, navel gently back towards your spine, stretching your feet away. So there shouldn't be any um, nipping or anything in your back. Take a big inhale here. And exhale. Inhale. And this time as you exhale, round your shoulders and you're lifting your front off the floor, almost like coming into a sphinx plank. And inhale, back into sphinx. One more of those. Exhale, round your shoulders and draw yourself up. Inhale, down again. So now we're going to bring our right hand across in front of our body and we're going to tuck our toes and roll onto the side of your body and from here you can keep your left hand on the floor and you can bring your left foot forward slightly if you need to or maybe you'll keep it on top of the other foot and we're going to do um, forearm plank so lift up keep pressing lifting your hips up as high as you can keep this foot in front if you need to and maybe take the left arm up overhead one more breath here and then lower down your left arm, bring yourself down and you're back into your sphinx pose. So we'll do the other side now. Left arm across, press into your right hand, turn onto the left side of your body. Now if this is too much for you, kind of just, of course, just stay here and lift yourself up as much as you can and feel that you're getting a nice lift here in the underside. But if you want to try it, maybe bring your right foot slightly in front or right foot on top of the left foot and lift your hips up and reach up into the right fingertips and breathe. Smile. See, this is wonderful. One more breath. And gently lower yourself down. Walk your hands back, tuck your toes under, and we'll just very briefly take your knees as wide as the mat and sit your bottom back and down, forehead to the floor. And just let everything go. And then bring yourself back up when you're ready. And from here, we're going to bring our hands forward, tuck our toes under, and bring yourself up into downward facing dog. So just walk your dog briefly, and then lift your sit bones up nice and high, shoulders away from each other and away from your ears. Lift your kneecaps, navel back towards the spine, inner eye of the elbows, almost facing forward, fingers well spread, and let your head go. And breathe. Inhale. And exhale. So don't worry. Keep your knees bent if you need to. You don't need to have straight legs at all. And then from here, we're going to step the right foot forward. And you can either bring the left knee to the floor or you can keep it raised. 
So press into the left hand wherever you are and inhale up with the right hand and exhale down. Inhale up, feel you're trying to get the left ribs forward. Exhale down. One more. Inhale up and exhale down. And then from here, we're going to pivot onto the baby toe side of the left foot. And then you're going to wriggle your right foot back. So you might keep your right foot about halfway along, or maybe you'll take it the whole way back beside the other foot, or maybe you'll even bring the right foot on top of the left foot into side plank and then release your hand up towards the ceiling and breathe and smile. Lift your hips up. Maybe you lift the right leg up. You don't need to do that bit. Here is perfect. One more breath here. Windmill the right arm down. Pivot onto both feet and bring yourself back into down facing dog. And again, give your dog a wee walk. And then we're gonna look forward and step through with the left foot and keep the right knee lifted or planted on the floor, your choice again. Press into the right hand and inhale up with the left. So watch your left knee stays in line with the left ankle. And exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And then the same thing again. Come on to the baby toe side of the right foot. And then heel toe or wriggle, whatever way you want this foot back, just to where you feel strong. So if you're here, stay here and you've got that foot to press into. But if you want to go a bit further, maybe you'll come back to here. So lots of options. Or maybe you'll bring the foot, the left foot on top of the right foot and lift your hips up wherever you are. Straighten your left arm up towards the ceiling, keep it in your hip. So many options here. And you're still getting the benefits of the stretch and the upper body strength. Maybe your foot will come up. Maybe not. One more breath here. And then windmill the left hand down. Pivot on the toes. And you're back up into downward facing dog. So lift your sit bones up. Press the floor away. And then look forward, we're going to step through again, this time with the right foot. Plant the heel of the left foot down and press into both feet. Sweep yourself up into Virabhadrasana 2. So your right knee and ankle are in line. Nice lunge in the right leg, pressing into the heel and baby toe side of the back foot. Turn your head and look over your right arm. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale into the fingertips. Exhale, sit a little bit lower. And then from here, we're going to bring both arms out in front of us. We're going to take the elbow of the left arm into the heel of the right, the crease of the right arm. And either give yourself a hug, back to the hands together, or palms together for eagle arms. And lift your elbows up if you can. Maybe you'll come into a little back bend. Don't lose your lunge. Lifting your elbows up. One more breath. Exhale gently. Bring your elbows down. Release your hands. And then from here, we're going to straighten the front leg and come into Trikonasana. So tuck the feet under, or tuck the hips under. And if you can, turn your head and look over up at your left thumb. One more breath. And then bend the front leg deeply. Whoops. 
windmill down. Pivoting the toes of the back foot, press into the toes of the back foot, and you're back into down dog. And we'll do the other side. So give your dog a wee walk. It's always important to move in whatever way you feel you need to in your yoga practice. So I'm just moving the way my body feels, needs a wee stretch or a wee movement. So left leg forward this time. Plant the heel of the right foot. Press into both feet, bring yourself up. Virabhadrasana two. Lunging deeply into the front leg, pressing into the baby toe side of the back leg. Turn your head and look over the left fingers if you can. Smile. Say, isn't it good to be alive? It is. Breathe. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath here. And then this time we're going to bring the elbow of the right arm into the crease of the left arm. Same thing again, maybe just a hug. Backs of the hands together, or if you have the flexibility, palms. Wherever you are, we're going to lift the elbows up. And breathe, tiny wee bit of a back bend. One more breath. And gently release your arms. And straighten the front leg. Feel as if you're taking the left ribs over onto the left thigh. Right arm floats up. Brief Trikonasana. One more breath here. And then windmill your arms down. Bend the front foot. Frame the front foot with your hands. Press into the toes. And we're back into Dine Dog and walk your dog. Sit bones lifting up, shoulders away from your ears. And then come into your static dog. And then from here, we're just going to walk our feet towards our hands, whatever way you want, feel is right for you. And then Allow yourself just to fold forward into Uttanasana. So knees bent as deeply as you need to. Feet about hip width apart. And just let everything go. Maybe hold on to the backs of your heels. Maybe hold on to your elbows. Wherever you are, let the crown of your head come down towards the floor. One more breath here. Then press into both feet and nice and slowly bring yourself up to stand. Well done, everyone. Good work. Now, from here, we're going to do, I'm sure you probably have guessed, we're going to do it. We're going to do Eagle Pose, Garadasana. So we've done the arms and we've already done the legs, albeit lying down the floor. So again, if you need to, go to a wall. If your balance, although it's good to challenge your balance too, so I wouldn't rush to the wall. So anyway, tell yourself you're taking the weight onto your left foot and leg. Reduce contact with the right foot. Bend the left knee quite deeply. And then cross the right foot over the left. So keep your toes on the floor if you feel your balance is dodgy. Well, my balance is very often dodgy. But maybe you'll be able to tuck the toes in behind that ankle. So the more you bend the standing leg, the easier it is. So my right leg's on top, so I'm going to bring my arms out and take the heel, the elbow of my right left arm into the crease of my right elbow. And again, hug, backs of hands. Wherever you are, you're going to lift your elbows up in line with your shoulders, if possible, and maybe sink a little deeper. Important to get something that's not moving. Inhale up. Exhale, sink a little deeper. Last breath here. Inhale up. Exhale, sink a little bit deeper. 
and then carefully release your arms. You release them and just all of a sudden your balance will go and undo your legs. Give them a wee walk. Other side. So we're going to bend quite deeply into the right foot and leg this time. So check you have a nice broad right foot, toes well spread and left foot over, either toes on the floor or maybe, whoops, you'll tuck your toes under. So this time your right arm will be on top. Elbows of right arm, backs of hands, hug, whatever. Lift your elbows up. And sit a little bit lower. And if you come out of it, don't worry. Just come back in again. Or put your toes to the floor. One more breath here. Reach your arms gently and bring yourself back. So never worry about coming out of it. Just it happens to us all. It happens to me quite regularly. Well done. So from here, you'll be glad to hear we've almost finished. We're going to make our way down onto the mat. Just whatever way feels good for you. And we're going to come back into Dandasana. And I'm not going to ask you to shift your bottom along the floor or anything at the minute. So we're going to bring our right heel in fairly close to our bottom. And then hug it with the left arm. And just bring your right arm anywhere feel that feels comfortable. In quite close to your hips probably. I'm just going to look up and look down, up and down. So as you inhale, see if you can lift up a little bit more and down. And then maybe you'll begin to turn slightly to the right and maybe look up and down. But do this very carefully, particularly if you have any neck issues. Just getting rid of any tension in the shoulders. And then maybe if you want to, just come into your fairly static pose and turn your head and look over your right shoulder. Pressing into your right hand. The more length you have, the more room there is to turn. One more breath. And nice and gently, bring yourself back to center. And then we'll swap sides. Left foot in. Same thing again, <clears throat> hug it with the right arm, lift up, left hand in fairly close to the left hip, working into the toes of the right foot. And we're just going to inhale up, the chin, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. And then maybe turn your head slightly to one side, inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And then if you want to, you can turn your head. Keep inhaling and lifting up. As you turn, maybe look over your left shoulder and just keep your head static still here. One more breath. And nice and slowly and gently. Bring yourself back to center. Release your left leg. And from here, we're just going to, <clears throat> excuse me, unroll down onto your mat for your brief relaxation. So take your feet out the full width of your mat. Maybe lift your hips and Slide them down towards your heels, tuck your shoulders under, arms rotated, backs of the hands on the floor, palms facing up. Maybe just roll your head gently from side to side and come to rest in the centre. Take a nice long, slow, deep inhale. And open your mouth wide, just go. Do one more for 
toes. Inhale. Nice, as deep as you can bake it. Fill your lungs right up to the top. Pause briefly. Open your mouth wide, just go. So we're going to do one more nice full breath. Just to wherever it's comfortable. Pause briefly at the top. And this time we're just going to allow it to whisper out through our nostrils. And just notice how you're feeling. Do a quick scan of your body, the back of your head, the backs of the shoulders, the backs of the arms, the buttocks, the backs of the thighs, the calves, the heels. And just allow the weight of your body <coughs> excuse me, to be completely supported by your mat. You know you can let go. Give yourself permission to let go. I give my body permission to rest. I give my body permission to relax. I give my body permission to let go. Just allow the whole of your body to feel heavy on the mat. The heels, the legs, <clears throat> the buttocks, all of the torso, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the head. And just feel that strength within you. And I'm not talking about the strength of your body. I'm talking about that inner strength. That inner strength, that inner wisdom that you have within you. So all you have to do is to look inside to see that inner strength, that inner wisdom that will help you and guide you through any turbulent times that keeps you strong, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. So just imagine that glowing strength, that glowing ball of energy and strength that is within you. Feel it getting stronger and brighter as you focus on it and know that you have that inner energy and strength that you can cope with whatever comes. So please continue to stay here for as long as you have time. Otherwise I'm going to finish now. So if you want to bring your hands together at your heart center Thank you so much for joining me for this short practice today. And have a lovely time, whatever you've planned for after this. And I really appreciate your company for these practices. May everyone know a life of joy. May everyone know a life of health. May everyone be happy. And may we all be at peace with whatever comes. Namaste.